Hi there, this is Village Highlights. Today we have Lindsay Anderson uh, from the Bright Star Home Care and Marianne Farner from the library and Nancy Galbraith from the Schmeeting Center. Don't go away. Welcome to the Village Highlights program, March 11th, 2015. Yes, it's Where going. Where did February go? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But anyway. It disappeared. <clears throat> welcome. welcome. Uh, my name is Peter Anonymous. I'm co-host along with Mickey, Victor. And as Mickey said, we, uh, we have, believe, a good program today. And we're going to start out with uh, Lindsay Anderson who is with Bright Star Home Care Service. And you're fairly new in this area, you as an individual, aren't you? Well, I've been in this area for about 11 years. Oh, that's all, okay. Yeah, so I've, I've been here a while, not, not too new. Okay. Um, I've been with Bright Star for about five years. Um, Bright Star is a home care company and what we do is we offer uh, CNAs and caregivers um, to people who might need some assistance in their home. Um, we offer all, lever all levels of care, um, everything from personal care, things like bathing, dressing, grooming, uh, to homemaker tasks, um, things like cooking, cleaning, um, transportation, errands, helping somebody go to their doctor's appointments or grocery shopping. Um, we also offer even hospice care. Um, so really there is, is a lot of different things that we can do to help um, people in the community. Well, now, <clears throat> now would, this, would this include 24-hour service? Yes. Um, there's really <coughs> nothing too small. There's nothing too, too large. Um, sometimes we see people 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, when we have 24-7 clients, uh, we work our CNAs in 12-hour shifts. Um, we can also see somebody just for a couple hours a day, um, a couple times a week, maybe just to you know help them um, either with um, shopping and errands and cleaning, things like that. So there really is, um, the possibilities are limitless. Mm -hmm. Now you are an RN. Yes. Uh, what, is, what is your specific task there at Bright Star? I am a registered nurse consultant and my specific task is to um, help people in the community, potential clients, um, potential referral sources, tell people about um, our services, what we offer, um, so that people can can know that we're out there. Okay. Um, now, whereabouts are, are you, is your office located? Our Benton County office is located in Bella Vista. We are on, uh, our address is 1 Oldham Drive. So we are um, on the corner of Oldham and 71, right across from Sonic. Across from Sonic and just... Uh, Across Oldham, <coughs> Dr. Yo's, the yes, eye doctor. Yes, yeah. that's exactly right. Right where they were going to build a uh, Walmart super, not a super center, but a neighborhood market or where they Oh, were, were big, they? Big stink <laughs> over that particular piece of property. <laughs> and I'm, I'm kind of glad Bright Star's there. It settled a lot of questions. Good. Uh, the, uh, the, the uprising was tremendous. That uh, the person wanted to sell that property to Walmart and the traffic would have just been as I'm sure you're aware, and just going in and out of there with, oh, yes. the, with, with what little traffic you have, it's, <clears throat> it's a tough place to get to. Yes, and, uh, especially the early, the early morning hours, there's yes. a lot of traffic. Oh yes, mm -hmm. but uh, <coughs> uh, anyone interested, they can contact you by phone. Yes, um, they can call us, they can <coughs> um, go to our website, or they can <coughs> stop by the office. 
and what are your office hours? Our office hours are eight to five, um, but we do answer our phone uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. <coughs> and the reason that we do that um, is in case, you know, we have a client um, that might need some care later on in the day <coughs> or has an issue that needs to be resolved after business hours. Mm, yeah. And that, 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 would, uh, that would make sense that you'd have to keep that <coughs> accessibility uh, just in, in case, especially if you've got a customer, a client. That's we also offer, um, we have registered nurses that are on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That is something that sets um, our company apart from <coughs> all other companies. Um, we always have registered nurses that are on call, um, <laughs> being sure to um, look over all of our all of our clients, oversee their care mm. at all times. Sounds like a great service. It is. Yes. Um, I assume charges are all negotiated, not not like, but you've got a basic. Uh, most of our um, most of our clients pay privately. <laughs> However, um, we do accept long term care insurance. And um, we accept VA benefits and also Medicaid waiver programs like Elder Choices and AAP. <clears throat> so there's, there's all kinds of potentials there. Yes, sir. Anything else that you want to add as far as what we've discussed? That, it's, uh, it's an interesting business. And uh, I was wondering if it's um, covered partially by Medicare. Medicare, unfortunately, does not pay for our services. Mm -hmm. um, Medicare, um, Medicare just doesn't doesn't pay for our services. Hopefully, one day that might change, but for right now, that's just mm -hmm. that's how it is. Mm -hmm. Basically, about the only insurance that you would be able to have cover would be a long-term care coverage. That's correct. Long-term care insurance. Oh. <coughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> but that's good to know. Yeah. And. Uh, because uh, there's a lot of people in this neck of the woods that are covered by Medicare. So if anybody, um, you know, thinks that maybe home care um, would be interesting to them and they wanted to know more, um, they could call our office and we would be happy to schedule a nurse visit for myself or one of the other registered nurses to come out to the home um, for free to explain our services, go over um, the rates and different um, payment options to kind of see what uh, we might have available to them. <coughs> Sounds pretty good. Mm -hmm. So just a quick phone call and you're off and running. And that's it. You got it. <laughs> okay. Well, it's, it's it's nice that you came here today. I, I appreciate uh, Nancy making the arrangements for you to come. I, and uh, <coughs> hope maybe this will... Uh, introduce a few more people to the uh, services of Bright Star. That would be wonderful. Thank and, you so much. And uh, you have a pleasant day. You too. Thanks very much for coming. Thanks for having me. And now you have a guest over there as you see from do. the library. Yes, Marianne Farner's here today. She's going to tell us about a book and also about some of the things that are happening at the library. Right. You'll probably have to get the hook because when I start talking about the library, I don't know when to stop. <laughs> Uh, the book that I brought with me today is, has the curious title of The All Girls Filling Station's Last Reunion. <laughs> that uh, sounds good. The reason for that, uh, the, the author is Fanny Flagg, and she's been around for quite a while and is most famous for her book, Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe, which was mm -hmm. made into a movie uh, that was released in 1991 and was quite a huge success. <clears throat> Fanny Flagg, who is herself a Southerner, presents the Southern temperament, behavior, and way of life in all of her novels because that's what she knows. In the All Girls Filling Station's last reunion, she takes up her familiar theme. The story begins in a small town on Mobile Bay, close to Selma, Alabama, and features Suki Poole, or Mrs. Earl J. Poole. Suki, her real name being Sarah Jane, has just produced the final wedding for the last of her three daughters. There is also a son, Carter. One of the author's most endearing traits as she writes is her sense of humor. For example, in describing the last wedding, which at the bride's request featured an animal theme, all the weddings had themes, from the book. And Cece, the last girl to marry, had carried her 10 pound Persian cat, Peekaboo, down the aisle instead of a wedding bouquet. <laughs> and the groom's German shepherd, dressed in a tux, served as best man. And if that wasn't bad enough, someone's turtle was the ring bearer. 
the entire thing had just been excruciating. You cannot hurry a turtle. <laughs> Although Fanny Flagg lightens up her prose with injected information like that, she also deals with serious issues. Suki is just beginning uh, to reassess her life as she has married the last of her daughters off and she realizes that what she's involved in probably is, is not very important. For example, she's trying to figure out how the small birds can get bird seed and uh, away from the jays and so she fills up the bird feeders in the backyard and gets the jays started eating, runs to the front yard, and gets the front yard feeders full of bird seed hoping that the little birds will come when well, nobody told them that. And so this doesn't work. She, she needs a life. <laughs> Making things more complicated is Suki's mother, Lenora, who is dubbed Winged Victory because of the way she enters the room as if she were a hood ornament. Lenora is self-centered and totally absorbed with the family and the family pride. One of Lenora's weekly activities is to polish the heirloom complete set of Francis <coughs> first sterling silver. Suki never feels like she measures up to Lenora and there is a reason why she is not like her mother. Suki's taken over receiving Lenora's mail and paying her bills, and being a true Southern lady, Lenora can't be bothered with such things. Because of this arrangement, Suki becomes the recipient of news from the past that changes her whole perspective on who she is. In Pulaski, Wisconsin, lives a Polish family of Polish immigrants, the Judah Berlanskis, hardworking first and second generation Americans, whom Suki would have no reason to even know about but for the information that she receives. As an aside, the Judah Berlansky girls did take over the family's filling station during World War II, hence the title. From this point, the book moves back and forth from the past to the present and from the Judah Berlansky family and back to Suki. The author has taken the fiction form to weave a story about a very real group uh, during, formed during World War II called the Wasps, and I don't mean white Anglo-Saxon <coughs> Protestants. These are the Women's Service Air Force pilots. These women flew planes from the manufacturer to where they needed to enter the war. The women also ferried planes where they needed to go at a moment's notice. Sometimes the planes were not in very good condition. The Wasps were not very well known, as are the Wax and the Waves. The girls of the Judah Berlansky family become wasps and spend their, the war helping the nation's defense. Their occupation takes them from, far from home and in situations that they never dreamed they would have to deal with. Curious juxtaposition. Here is the Southern Belle Suki with very real link to the Judah Berlansky wasps. I'll not be telling you what that link is, but only to say that the plot gives you a very satisfying read and at the same time you learn about the little known wasps. Flag, flag mixes the Southern culture and way of life with her typical sense of humor and with the very real and serious nature of war and those who serve. Flag comes by the story of the Wasp quite by accident when she receives a box of old memorabilia. She asks the question, what is fate and what is simply luck? And she goes on to say, of course I cannot know anything for sure, but sometimes I wonder if some stories just want to be written and they go out looking for someone to write them. I believe this one did and I hope you think so too. After having read this book, I agree with Fanny Flagg. Curiously enough, just last week, uh, the Democrat Gazette came out with an article called Women with Wings. And it was a whole article on wasps and four women from Arkansas hmm. who were part of the group. Uh, I learned a lot about that. There were uh, 25,000 women applied and just over a thousand completed the training. They flew every type of aircraft imaginable. Uh, they did every mission except combat. Curiously enough, their class books featured Tinkerbell. I mean, for something <laughs> as brave as they did, this seems a little curious to me, but uh, 38 died during their service. Uh, it was closed down in 1949, and they were told to go back home. Since they were not officially part of the military, they had to pay their own way to go back. Hmm. There's still 174 of these women still alive. So I thought this was a, a good story and source of good information. The way it starts out, it, it sounds like it's going to be quite a comedy. But well, it uh, actually is all the way through because yeah. she keeps interjecting these little stories. Yes. <laughs> it sounds like a great book. Yeah. 
Well, uh, we have kept it no secret that we are wanting to expand the Bella Vista Library. Right, and tell we us about no that. We have no room for anything. <laughs> um, so how's that coming? It's it's coming along fine. It's um, it's never fast enough. You know, it just <laughs> right. never is. And we, we've uh, had some disappointments, things that didn't come through for us. And then we've had some wonderful, nice surprises also. Mm -hmm. um, one thing we have coming up in, on April the 17th, is a benefit put on by Mach 1 Financials, which is right here in Bella Vista. Hmm. Uh, it features the Swan Brothers, that's S-W-O-N, and they were um, the third runner-up uh, on The Voice, I believe season before last. Uh, they're quite well known. They're, they are country, but country now is not the guitar twanging that it used to be, the kind right. of crossover. At any rate, they have opened for Miranda Lambert so uh, they do have a very good reputation. Mm -hmm. uh, this is free, but it is a benefit. Uh, they're asking if you want to go that you get on the Mach 1 financial website and click on events and then uh, it's called Spring Fest with the Swan Brothers and register. Uh, that's all you have to do. It's at the Aaron's Art Center, so it's close and a, and a beautiful venue. Mm -hmm. Beautiful venue. So. And that's when? It's April 17th. Okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. Coming right up. Yes. Yes. Right, right after your taxes are due. <laughs> yes, and, and my birthday. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, and my birthday. Well, you can celebrate your birthday. By I can do that. that. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Anything else that uh, is going on at the library that we need to know about? Always something going on. Yes. Um, yeah, we, um, if, if people have not seen what our expansion looks like, there is a beautiful model oh, in the very there? center of the library that was created by okay. uh, Marlon Blackwell, oh, architects wow. out of Fayetteville. Uh -huh. And you can see what's what we're looking to do. Oh, good. Um, we want to add about 9,000 square feet, which still makes us undersized for the number of citizens we have in Bella Vista. But since we're so spread out, we hope that maybe someday in the distant future we can uh, build a branch or open a branch on the west side. Oh, so, okay. Anyway, it's, That'd it's all, be nice. <laughs> all in the future and it all mm -hmm. takes time. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds great. And thank you so much for coming and telling us about all this and, mm -hmm. and that book. I think that sounds really good. <laughs> we all have, it's, it's available at the Bella Vista Library, yes. as is the newspaper in the back issues of the oh, Democrats. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, good. That's good to know. Full service, full service. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, Marianne. You know, it's, it's always amazing how something like that just falls into place. You know, you also have to talk about a book that's talking about the uh -huh. wasps and there's uh, a newspaper yes. article Look at that. Right Whoa, I'm yeah. taking that with me. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'll have to dig that out and read it. I, I only get the paper on the weekend, so oh. it's probably, what day did that come out? It was last Tuesday. I'll, tell you Tuesday. What, I'll just let you take it out. Oh, it okay. served its purpose for it's, me. If it was, <laughs> if it was last Tuesday, that has gone. I've already recycled it. Yeah, <laughs> true. I think. Well, so. I don't need yours now. No, that's good. That's good. Thank <laughs> you, Mary Ann. You saved it. <laughs> okay. Well, we have come to the time where we're going to take a short break. We will pause to give you the opportunity to see a promotional on the Saturday Night Fright, Fright. Special. So stay tuned. <laughs> Saturday Fright Night Special airs each Saturday evening at 8 p.m. This week's program will be Teenage Zombies. Oh, that sounds good. Stay exciting. tuned. <laughs> and we're back with the Village yes. Highlights. Yes, we are. And our next guest, uh, I think you've seen this lady before. She's sort of a regular on our show. Nancy Galbraith from the Schmeeting Center upstairs in this building. And she's got a few activities going on up there. <laughs> We've been busy. You've been busy. We've been busy. And yeah, so, which is good. So just why don't you just tell those folks out there what you've been busy okay. doing. So uh, one of the things that we've got scheduled this month, I just want to kind of go over a little bit of our calendar and what's going on, is the Planning Ahead series. Have you ever been to any of the Planning Ahead series? No, I don't believe in Planning Ahead. <laughs> well, I've actually been to a couple of them just to kind of get information, and it's been very informative. The Planning Ahead series is held over... 
Saturday Night Fright special airs each Saturday at 8 p.m. This week's special will be Teenage Zombies. So don't miss it. And we're back with Village Highlights. Mm -hmm. Back to the normal things of life. No more zombies. <laughs> That's <laughs> good. <laughs> and especially since our next guest is, is far from being a zombie. True. That's true. <laughs> but anyway, Nancy Galbraith from the She Meeting Center upstairs is here to talk about a few of the activities that she's been working on. And I know from stopping in in her office to talk with her on, on, a, on various cases, she's one busy lady. You got a lot time. of you got a lot of things. You're juggling a lot of things in the air. Yeah, sorry. Well, so, it's nice to be here. Though, is, yeah, okay. And Glad to share some of that away. information yeah. and, and get people involved in some of the programs that are going on um, this month in March and then in, into April also. But uh, planning ahead is one of the programs that they offer over at the um, Highlands Church. And I've been to a few of them. They've been wonderful, very informative, and uh, take you can take home information right away. You know to start adding it into your um, anything that you need to do, whatever it is that's doing. But anyway, the um, planning ahead for the unexpected. So some of the questions are: Do your children know what to do if both of you passed away? Are you both listed on accounts? such as the Cox account. I guess there's been several people that maybe the wife or the husband um, have the accounts and so the other person doesn't know that and then they can't get into it and it turns into quite a, mm. you know, a conundrum, I would say. So, and also, who will make decisions for you if you can't? So just a lots of different things and Margaret Christensen oh, yes. uh, is going to be part of that um, presentation, and also Ellen Creekbaum is going to, to be that. So that is going to be on March 17th, 1.30 to 3.30 over at the Highlands Church, and admission is one non-perishable food item. So they're going to probably do about four different planning aheads this year, so we'll kind of go through those as they come and add to it. So they'll be collecting... Uh, <coughs> A can food for for the food bank. Yes, for their mm -hmm. food pantry, and then that. So really, it's just everybody's helping everyone on yeah. that. And that, the deal. that sounds so. that sounds kind of similar to a program that we had at the Presbyterian Church <coughs> called Facing Finals, oh. where you get a booklet and all of the things that you wind up mm -hmm. having to do, mm -hmm. and it's amazing how things change. Yes. <laughs> oh man. I don't know how many changes on, on page one with where I list right. my kids. Yeah. I'm one, one kid can't settle down. She's moving all over the place. But uh, <laughs> you have to kind of change things. Kid, and, yeah. she'll be 60 next month. So. Yeah. <laughs> Still a kid. <laughs> Still a kid. She's my kid. So anyway, uh, that's that's well, that's one program. That's you the got one. Coming up. Um, also, we're going to be doing for uh, colon health is the topic for the lunch and learn, and that is going to be on March 24th. And the speaker for that is going to be Dr. Philip Sandino, and so that's with the Senior Circle uh, Northwest Medical Center. They do the lunch and learn every every month. And, and what so was we the title of that, that again? It's going to be colon health. Colon, colon health. health. Oh, colon. C O L O N. Mm -hmm. Colon help. health. Health, okay. Health. Uh -huh. I was, I, I, my ears weren't working on that. I couldn't make that out. But they have but a really cool. good, a uh, good group usually come out. There's usually probably between thirty and forty people mm. come out for each month. So um, if anybody's interested, they can call me on my office. You know, mm. if they just want more information on it, be happy to you know offer that. <laughs> April, April starts out to be another busy month. We are, <laughs> we've been offering. Um, classes for caregivers mm -hmm. this, uh, for over the last two weeks. We've been kind of Skyping in with our Springdale office, so we have some of our, um, some of the classes are held there and some are held in ours, but we're able to Skype back and forth so students can be at both locations instead of having to drive mm -hmm. all the way to Bella Vista or all the way to Springdale. So it's been really That's interesting. Great. Oh, Skype great. is great. Yeah, yeah, we use a, a program called Jabber. And so it's been, it 
it's a learning experience for me every time we do something different <laughs> like this. Is there's a lot of technical stuff, but it works, and the students got through and passed, so all was good. Mm -hmm. We're going to be offering CPR classes in Bella Vista um, on April 10th. Ellen Creek Bomb will be um, over that, so we probably will probably have about five to seven people mm -hmm. in that. So if anybody needs CPR, please give us a call, and we'll sign you up. We also have another round of Alzheimer's dementia class on April 15th through the 17th. It's a three-day class, very informative. It's very, <clears throat> um, it's really pared down to talk about just to teach the caregivers about Alzheimer's and dementia, and like we talked before um, the last month, you know how to communicate, what to do, you know, like if Sandowner syndrome is something, or if somebody's um, wanting to escape or exit seek all the time. So there's just lots of different things. It's a three-day class, very informative. And last but not least, that planning ahead for the future is the <laughs> Senior Service Expo, which will be on April 30th. We've got close to 40 vendors, been working on all the different news articles that'll go in the insert. So um, Tom Throne was with me yesterday and we kind of ironed out all that stuff. We've got uh, vendors that um, will be providing food. We've got, we've got kind of a lot of different things and a wide variety of vendors. So some people are financial, some might be um, doing some of the planning ahead, which you're, and downsizing type things, caregivers, we've got uh, elder law, and working on maybe a couple of speaking engagements. So we're, that's still in the process. So that covers quite a lot. Yeah, we have quite a lot of stuff going on for yeah, that's, it. That's at Reardon Hall. Reardon Hall, nine to one, and same, kind of the same place, same thing, but we'll be providing some transportation, you know, within the park, you know, to park and to get to yeah. where they need to go. So mm -hmm. that's, it's quite a walk if you're at, at the oh, far yeah. end of the parking lots and mm -hmm. stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, let's see, the you know, business associations. Coming up too. Fair this, mm -hmm. end of this month, last yeah. Friday. Yeah. And a couple times they provided a, a okay. golf cart to, to do. pick up people in the far reaches of the parking lot. Mm -hmm. The Clear Creek um, yeah. golf car is really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got my volunteers lined up for all of that. <laughs> I think we've got our food in line, which we need, and our coffee, and all that good stuff. And yeah, so that'll be here before yeah. we know and it. And you got to have yeah. food to draw a crowd. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And giveaways. And giveaways. Giveaways, Vendors yes. Giveaways. Usually the vendors do do that on their own, which yes. ends up working out to be great because a lot of times there's even more, you know, door prizes to do. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Well, you got a busy couple of months coming up. It's been really, it's been good though. And, yeah. And then, then you and we had all this weather issue in between yeah. here, so that kind of <laughs> broke things up a little bit. And yeah. I think we're back on track this week. So. And, and then once you get rid of March and April, you start all over again yeah. with with the senior with the health Sunday. fair. Yeah. Yes, so, yes, yeah. So it's it's a, it's, it's a never ending process. No, but I have yeah, but it's learning. That that planning ahead, I've learned quite a bit. I've, you know, I mean, I've always worked with seniors in the past, but I think when you're looking at everything um, to plan ahead and what is needed until you start getting a little older or you're thinking about your parents or you're you know caring for somebody then you start thinking about the different things yeah. that you need to take care of mm -hmm. it's very important now is any of these specific programs are there any charges for any of them like, um, like the, the lunch and learn or the uh, uh, the planning ahead. Uh, no, there's no charges for those. Now, if they're doing caregiver classes and, and becoming caregivers, there is charges for the caregiver classes. But the lunch mm -hmm. and learn, you bring your own lunch, don't you? Actually, if you um, sign up with Senior Circle, they provide a free lunch oh, for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no it's a pretty bad. nominal fee for the whole year, mm -hmm. uh, about $15. So you can get your program and you have your lunch each month so mm -hmm. and they have, a pro they have a program every month then. every month mm -hmm. so it's a good yeah good. different uh, uh, physician is usually speaking on a different topic and it kind of mixes between the Springdale and the Benton County mm -hmm. and they have those where they uh, that is at the um, Lutheran Church and in, in Bella Vista is where they hold that oh, okay mm -hmm. and it's, in, it's the Lutheran Church down by Cooper Road yes yeah. on Cooper yes Road. yes 
Mm -hmm. Okay, well. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll let you go. <laughs> so you can get busy on all of these so things. So I get back to work. Doing, doing all your planning. I have absolutely no idea how we are on time. I haven't seen anybody giving us signals of whatever. Or, but I do have a couple of things that I did want to make an announcement about. Uh, shortly before the we started, I was given two immediate press releases. Mm. Uh, and this, this is a rather interesting place. Uh, the Artist Retreat Center is having a coffee house concert this coming Saturday, the 14th. Oh, really? Hmm. And then they've also got a program, I'm not sure what day, I guess it's the thir Thursday on the 19th. And on uh, this Saturday, um, Brian Whiteside of Phoenix, Arizona, will be, is a performer, uh, does finger picking, guitar work, and so on. Um, it will be at the Artist Retreat Center, which, which is on Lookout Drive down along Highway 71. That's one of the, one of the houses in Old Bella Vista, and it's been remodeled, and uh, uh, they're they're getting some very active. Yes. Things going on down there, and so uh, the one will be and like this. This sounds intriguing. Brian plays songs made popular by the likes of Frank Sinatra, the Mills Brothers, Nat King Cole, Tony Bennett, Louis Armstrong. Yeah, have you ever heard any of those names before? <laughs> and yeah. it goes on and on, even to the point where they do music. By the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, okay. uh, the Eagles, the Kingston Trio, Peter Paul and Mary—that's that's a real blend of music. Yes, it but is. That would, sounds like a great, great program. Mm -hmm. But that will tickets are ten dollars, uh, and the address is thirteen four sixty seven Lookout Drive. But it's right off of seventy one. Uh, tough to get to. You almost have to be going south on seventy one. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah, a little do. bit. Uh, a little bit south of the rest area, but um, if you have, if you have any information you want on that, if you want reservations, you can call two six eight six four six three, and then the program on the eighteenth will be uh, John Henry and Chris Cro Crowfoot Crovella. That's a seven o'clock program on Thursday evening. Ten dollars again is the price for admission. That's same, the place. same place. Yeah, same place at the uh, um, Artist Retreat Center. Mm -hmm. uh, They're getting really busy too. They are. They are. And um, this is all part. And uh, I, I think it's it's a, it's one of the older homes uh, of the original people that that, that established Bella Vista. A uh, hundred years ago, mm -hmm. yeah. and this is this is the year I think 2015 is the uh, it's going to be a we got to get some people lined up because there's going to be a joint celebration because old Bella Vista will be a hundred years old and new Bella Vista will be 50 years old oh. <laughs> both the same in here, hmm. but. Uh, when I, you when you go by that place, it doesn't look like it's big enough to have these things. No, going on, no. But it is. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been in there yet. I got to stop <laughs> by sometime and take a look, see what's going on. But uh, mm -hmm. that's some of the things going on uh, here in Bella Vista, and yes. uh, always something. Always, going on. always. Oh Lord, always something <laughs> going on. Yeah. Uh, we want to remind our, our viewers that uh, this is being taped. On Wednesday morning, the 11th of March, uh, it will be aired this afternoon at 4 o'clock or a little after 4 o'clock, immediately after the afternoon devotional. Then again at 6 o'clock uh, tomorrow on Friday, or Thursday, I don't know. Uh, it'll be on at 7 p.m., Friday at 9 a.m., and Saturday 11 a.m. So there's an opportunity to refresh your memory of all of the things that are going on. Yeah, if you uh, didn't get everything written down, 
tune in again the yeah, next time. Yeah, we, we should do that. I know, so I, know, <laughs> I know Milt always tells people when he starts his show, get a paper and pencil and have it handy because there's a lot of phone numbers going to write down. We should <laughs> right. remember to do that. But uh, Bella Vista Community TV is a 100% volunteer organization and we would love to have you come and volunteer. Stop in on a Wednesday morning when we're here to tape a program, see what's going on, see what might be of interest to you, and join us, because uh, we're just just like a family. Yes. And now we need to come up with some kind of a closing line to let the people know that we're about to close. Yeah. And I think the best thing to do is just say that that's going to be a wrap mm -hmm. and we do it all for you. For you.